Hello, welcome to Sunday Worship for Northminster United Church. Today is Sunday, October 17th, 2021. Our Christ candle is lit here this morning and we pause in a moment of gratitude, remembering that we live, work, worship and play on Treaty 7 land. Today in worship, we are also marking uh, a special occasion, the occasion of World Food Day. And we thank our United Church of Canada and our Mission and Service Fund for supplying us with resources so that we can share in this time intentionally together this morning. Where would we be without food? We certainly wouldn't be at a Starbucks or a grocery store or a restaurant we wouldn't in fact be anywhere for very long because we need food to live, don't we? Food is seen as a basic human right. And yet, amazingly, one in nine people globally experience chronic hunger. As far back as 1945, the United Nations recognized food not as a privilege, but as a right. And that's why World Food Day was created. It is observed annually on or around October 16th, and that's been since 1979. World Food Day is an observance to draw attention to the plight of the hungry, and so today, let us join together in eradicating hunger. We gather this morning on sacred ground, on rich earth that nourishes us, under the great awning of the sky that replenishes us, to once again listen to the voice that warms our hearts and says, come follow me. Let's sing. Let us build a house where 
In John 4, verse 34, Jesus says, My food is to do the will of God, who sent me to complete God's work. Food is the source of our energy. What Jesus was saying is that the will of God energizes him to live out his mission. So as we pray this morning, we turn to God to replenish our sense of call and purpose. Let's pray. God, the stories of our faith remind us that you are manna from heaven and water from rock. You are the miracle of the loaves and fish. You are our bread of life. In this hour, in this time, fill us up with your holy word. Energize us with your songs. Make us thankful, aware, inspired. Thankful for the universe that feeds us, aware that food is a sacred gift given to all, and yet still withheld from many. And help us be inspired enough to make a difference. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do you have a favorite grace you like to say? Sometimes it's Johnny Appleseed, or maybe we sing a favorite grace when we're at camp or at church. Maybe around your family table, you have a grace you say um, for special occasions like Thanksgiving, or, or maybe every night you say the same grace. One of these things at our house we have, uh, when we say grace, we sometimes use this. And this is a fun dice that I bought when our church went to Iona in Scotland. And it's something that you roll the dice and you see what prayer comes up and then you read it. So, so for example, if I were to roll the dice, what's it going to say? It says, Heavenly God, we praise you and thank you for our daily food. Amen. Where's one more we could read? This one says, God, I will give thanks to you because of your love. Share this meal with us. Amen. Isn't that neat? You can see that prayer a little bit there. It's a beautiful dice. There's even a picture of the abbey, I think, on it, of where we stayed when we were in Scotland. So, so this is one way you might try saying grace. You could use something like this. It just adds a little bit of fun, and whoever rolls the dice maybe can read that prayer that night. So why do we say grace? Why is it important for us to do that? Well, for one thing, we are certainly giving thanks to God and remembering that our food comes from creation, from what God has made for us. We also can remember when we say grace that that we have to give thanks for the people who have prepared the meal for us or for those who helped grow that food, those who helped deliver that food for us. When we say grace, we are remembering that food is sacred. It is, it is holy. It is, it is a gift for us. And that when we eat, we are about to do something really, really important because that's what food is. It is an important, sacred human right in our lives. So we're, we're pausing in that moment of grace to remember that. When we say grace, we're also remembering how fortunate we are to eat, that not everyone in our world is as fortunate as we are. As a church, we also um, give thanks and recognize that importance through things like our mission and service fund, where really generous people will give in support of programs that help everybody access food that's close to home in Canada and all around the world. So what are some of the things our mission and service fund does? Well, it helps to feed the hungry. It will help fund programs that will teach people how to grow food. It will also help educate people to be able to have skills 
so that they can then get jobs, which will then help sustain them in their lives. They will have those jobs and then be able to purchase food to support their families and themselves. Also, our Mission and Service Fund will do things like fund community gardens across Canada. So it's a really important project, a really important fund that we can support when we, we give to the Mission and Service Fund. So when we go back to saying grace, it is a way for reminding us that food is a sacred gift from God. And because it's a sacred gift, we especially remember that everybody has the right to eat. And so through our Mission and Service Fund, we try to make sure that indeed everyone has access to wonderful food. I'm going to invite you now to watch a movie about the Mission and Service Fund, a video, I guess, about the Mission and Service Fund. One in nine people around the world go to bed hungry each night. Emmanuel Baia is changing the face of hunger in his community. My name is Emmanuel Carissa Baia, and uh, I come from Magarini, sub-county in Cliffy County. I was in ARI in 2009. ARI, Asian Rural Institute, is an agricultural training center your mission and service gifts support. ARI taught Emmanuel skills that helped him develop his children's center and farm. We train the community on uh, organic farming. So at Magarini Children's Center, we protect and take care of the soil. Emmanuel lost his parents when he was a child. His heart stirred when he saw children, orphaned because of the HIV AIDS crisis, under the cashew trees near his property, too busy looking for food to go to school. We have been taking care of our orphan and our vulnerable children in providing them with basic needs, including education. Today, over 287 children attend the Children's Center, and the demonstration farm serves seven communities. We have realized that as we take care of the soil, we take care of ourselves. As we take care of the land, we take care of the children, we take care of the people, and this brings love to the community. Your gifts support extraordinary leaders like Emmanuel to develop life-changing potential. Make a gift through Mission and Service today. Together, we can make a difference. Our first reading on this World Food Day is from Isaiah chapter 58. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose water never fail. And our gospel reading today is from Matthew 13, verses 1 to 9. The same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil, but when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no roots, they withered away. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone 
with ears listen. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. I thought for our reflection time, we could be over in this corner of the sanctuary where our wonderful Mission and Service Fund banner is. I don't think it's one you've seen much since we've been apart and you've been watching things virtually, but I just wanted to show it off a bit because it is such a beautiful banner. Do you know what it's like to put every ounce of availability and energy into something and then have it flop completely? Do you know what it's like to do your best and then find that your best just isn't good enough? Or do you know what it's like to wait for something good in your life to grow and then you wait and you wait and you wait? That day when Jesus was sitting in that boat in the middle of the sea, he was speaking to a well-worn, actually maybe more like a worn out crowd even, that felt just like that. His followers had been working so hard, really hard to share the good news that they had discovered, but that message just wasn't sinking in for some reason. Here they were going from town to town, sharing Jesus' life-saving, really, message that justice was attainable, that they were these key values that they were holding, that they were sharing of things like kindness and generosity, that if they could just live this out collectively, they could, they could change the world, save the world. And yet, despite their important message, everywhere they went, they brushed up against people who were too preoccupied or too bored or too self-centered or too stressed to listen. They just, no one wanted to pay attention. And so each time this door would likely slam in their face and they were discouraged. And that discouragement was really ramping up and it just wasn't supposed to be like this. You probably have felt that about something at some point in your own life. Even though Jesus was sitting in the middle of the sea, it's likely still in that moment he could see into their very hearts of all who were gathered on the shore that day to listen to him. And in that calm and reassuring voice, he told them stories to help them understand just a little bit more, to help them understand the world and themselves and to make sense of life. One of those stories was the parable of the sower that we heard today, that some seeds will fall on the path and the birds will eat them, Some will fall on rock and the sun will scorch them. Some will fall on thorns and be choked out. But some will fall on good soil and bear this unbelievable crop. The parable of the sower was a pep talk of sorts. It wasn't the kind you would hear in the locker room, though. It wasn't about how great Jesus' followers were and there'd be success at every turn. And no, it was more realistic. Some of the work you do is going to feel like a waste of time. Some of it will even be sabotaged. But keep going because there will be success. Have hope. Trust me live your mission. That's the words of encouragement Jesus was offering. This is for us. It really is this millennia old age message that we still need to hear today, especially on this World Food Sunday. 690 million people will go hungry tonight. 
Just think about that, 690 million people. They aren't asking, what will we eat for dinner? No, they are 690 million people asking, will we eat dinner? And they ask that question night after night. We can't just think of this globally either. It, it's happening in our own community. It's, it's close to home, it's down the street, it's maybe even next door. This is a global, um, a global concern, a global issue, but it's also very close to home. Hunger is so pervasive, you'd think that the whole world was just made of dust, that no crops could grow anywhere. But we know, we know there's nothing wrong with Mother Nature. That problem, this problem we're facing, it lies in the choices that we are making. So poverty, land grabbing, climate change, the commodification of food and water, you know that you actually have to buy water that's come from a free source, you have to buy bottled water, that's, that's the commodification for example. Conflict, uh, political instability, the causes of hunger are so complex, these problems are so intertwined, they're, they're systematic, so it's natural to wonder how you and I are really going to ever make a difference in any of this. It's like we're standing on that shore right alongside Jesus' disciples, and there are problems as big as that sea in front of us. And even Jesus is sitting, sitting there, admitting that addressing hunger isn't easy. He doesn't sugarcoat the outcome of our work. Just like he said, some seeds just aren't going to land where we need them, or they're not going to create the results we want. But he says some seeds will fall on good soil, and the results will be phenomenal. Jesus got into the boat that day and rowed out to sea so he could look and turn back and see the whole crowd all at once. So his voice would carry across the water to each and every one of them so that they could take his parable to heart and hear him say, live your mission. One of the big ways that we live out our mission as a United Church is by sharing what we have collectively through the Mission and Service Fund. As a United Church, we endorse the principles of food sovereignty, the right of people to healthy and culturally appropriate food. Food that's produced through ecologically sound and sustainable methods, and their right to define their own food and agricultural systems. We believe that food is a sacred gift from God. It's manna from heaven, and so no one should go hungry. The United Church resources for this World Food Sunday say, that's why from coast to coast in Canada, our generosity supports community kitchens and meal programs, as well as food, food cupboards, shelters, job training programs, community gardens, and healthy food programs. Internationally, we send food in times of crisis. We distribute seeds, fund agricultural training programs and micro lending programs, and support projects that help small scale farmers access equipment that they need. And even in some instances, build infrastructure so they can transport their food to market. We, worked, we work with partners like ACT Alliance and the Canadian Food Grains Bank to move beyond the charity model by helping to work toward long-term systematic change through respectful, part, respectful partnerships. So it's true that we aren't going to solve all the problems of the world, but for some people, our support does mean the world. You might remember a story that the United Church's 
philanthropy unit shared not long ago about a young Canadian named Jesse. When he was 12 years old, Jesse had a traumatic brain injury. His life instantly changed because his brain didn't function the way it once did. And by the time he was 17, Jesse had been hospitalized 32 times. Through the ups and downs, his mother took care of him. She was his rock, but even not long after that, three years later, she herself died of cancer. Without his mother, Jesse's life spiraled out of control. Two years ago, he survived a very painfully cold winter sleeping in a storage unit. Then he went to Stella's Circle, a mission and service fund partner, where he was fed, received help to find a home, and is now completing a greenhouse technician college program. So today, Jesse is leading a new social enterprise to grow food for sale. That is what happens when good seed falls on good soil. When our seeds of generosity fall on good soil. The minute for missions that we watch, and the one in particular that we watched earlier today, is about a similar idea. Emmanuel's story we heard of what grows when seeds of generosity fall on good soil. 690 million people may be going hungry tonight. But Jesse and Emmanuel and all the people in their communities that they support and the thousands of people that the Mission and Service Fund supports, the partners that support people around the world through the United Church's generosity, those people are not among the 690 million. On this World Food Day, we need to celebrate all the things that are possible because they are supported by people like us and churches like ours, like Northminster. And this is what happens when we live our mission. Living God's mission is like planting seeds. It's that each seed contains the basic material needed to pull off a miracle. And like Jesus says, when they hit good dirt, miracles grow. So thank you. Thank you for your generosity in supporting the Mission and Service Fund, the ways you give through your, your envelopes or through PAR or Tithely to m &S. Thank you for taking these stories of Jesus seriously, taking them into your heart, letting them transform your lives. Thank you for standing on the shoreline like the disciples did and like they have done for a millennia and be open to listening to the parable of the sower. So now I think it's time for us to get busy planting seeds. So let's take our gifts, our lives, our faith, and let's go and live God's mission. Amen. This thread I weave this step I dance, this stone I carve, this ball I bounce, this nail I drive, this pearl I string, this flag I wave, this note I sing, this pot I shape, this fire I light, this fence I leap, this bone I knit, this seed I nurse, this rift I mend, this child I raise, this earth I tend, this check I write, this march I join, this faith I state, this truth I sign, this is small part in one small place. 
of one heart's beat for one great peace. This thread I weave, this step I dance, this song I call, this call I dance, this veil I dry, this pearl I string, this flag I wave, this note I sing, this part. This fire I light, this fence I weave, this bow I knit, this seed I nurse, this rift I mend, this child I raise, this earth I turn, this gem I write, this march I join. Any prayers that you would like to name this morning, please do type them into the comments section of Facebook so that you can read them together, read them and lift them in prayer to God. Let's pray. Creator God, bless this day, farmers, fishers, gatherers, hunters, migrant workers, all agricultural workers here in Canada and around the world. Bless those who transport, distribute, and prepare food. Bless those pouring their heart and soul into fostering and protecting clean water, healthy soil, and biodiversity. Bless those advocating for safe, healthy, cultural culturally appropriate food. Bless those challenging systems that treat food as a commodity rather than a sacred right. Bless those working hard to understand where food comes from and to have a healthy relationship with it. Bless those who share what they can so that no one goes hungry. Bless the breakfast programs community kitchens, shared gardens, food banks. Bless agricultural training programs that we support through mission and service. Bless our church suppers. Bless our barbecues, our luncheons, our teas, our fellowship time. Today, especially, we give thanks for memories of Northminster food memory, food ministries that are on pause right now. Supporting the Aboriginal Friendship Centre is something we've done currently and recently with non-perishable food uh, through this pandemic. Bless the times that we've given to the Veterans Food Bank and the Calgary Food Bank over the years. Our offering of Supper Church from Uh, 2018 to 2020 on Thursday nights once a month. Bless our memories we treasure of turkey suppers, delicious food served in the cafe at our craft fairs, the dinners and fundraisers throughout our history. God bless these memories that we treasure and that we look forward to again. Bless our home kitchens, our tables, and all who gather around them. Bless us as we pray in thanksgiving for your abundant grace. Bless us now as we pray in the way of Jesus, saying, Our Mother, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we've heard today, our generosity matters. With God's help, our offering makes a difference in people's lives every single day. Worshiping God through our, our gifts, our tithes, our offerings are parts of that. Let us pray. Generous God, we offer our gifts in response to your call to care. We offer them with gratitude and love, trusting that you will use them to feed bodies, minds, and hearts. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Friday email should be in your inbox from a couple of days ago. Lots of information in there about everything ongoing at Northminster. And to highlight just a few of, uh, a few of them uh, this morning for you, one of course is Trunk or Treat. Thanks so much to all of you who are signing up to host one of, um, one of the spots where children will come in the safe, fun environment on, on Halloween Sunday at one o'clock and trick or treat from vehicle to vehicle. And we hope you will sign up. Um, especially those of you who might not feel comfortable opening your doors at night or don't have many children in your own neighborhood. This is a fun daytime way that you can come and see all the little ones trick-or-treating. Maybe invite a neighbor to come and join you. Maybe you want to pull a committee together from the congregation and, and host a trunk for trunk or treat. So please sign up through the office that you plan to join us and uh, families with little kids share this with your friends and family and put on your costumes that day and come and have fun in our church parking lot the youth group's also going to be offering some fun activities alongside the trick-or-treating so hope to see you on the 31st we are um, offering an Epicure fundraiser. Epicure is one of my favorite um, seasonings and spicing, spices products. You probably are familiar with Epicure. It's a Canadian company. And we're asking you to support this fundraiser by inviting folks that you know to purchase one of these great $25 meal kits. And this is wonderful if you're a single person or a couple or feeding a family to purchase one of those kits by um, filling out the order form that's in the email or by calling the office. And as well, if you love Epic here and want to order anything else from the catalog, there is a link in your Friday email. So spread the word, place some orders, ask others to place orders, take it to your workplace. And we look forward to making this a great fundraiser. The deadline's not far from now, so keep an eye on when we need all our orders in by. We are having supper church coming up on the 28th, and we're thankful that Ralph Tweeton will be um, offering some a presentation about his experiences in the far north as a pilot. And so plan to come about six o'clock, share a meal on Zoom, visit for a bit, and then we'll hear from Ralph about 6.30. And we are having a baptism and membership service um, in a safe COVID friendly way. We're going to be recording it next Sunday afternoon, the 24th. If you are interested in baptism for a young person in your life or perhaps yourself, or you are new to Northminster or just want, you've been here a while and just want to celebrate that you belong and have some questions about membership, would like to become a member, please reach out to me. We'd love to have you join us on the afternoon of the 24th, and we'll be recording that and then sharing it in Sunday worship the week after. All other announcements, please do take time to read, and we look forward to seeing you uh, at these events soon. And now for our blessing to end this World Food Sunday service. These words of commissioning come from 1 Corinthians 10, verse 31. 
whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Do it all for the glory of God. And may God, who is our creator, and Jesus, who is our redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our sustainer, inspire us all to live our mission this day and forevermore. Amen. Let's go out singing now to end our worship. Thank you so much for being here, and we hope to see you soon. Bye for now.